fun stuff. It's really like, I was at Whole Foods and I saw this. What is that? <laughs> Fiddlehead ferns collected by Far West fungi, fungi, California mushrooms. So when they were out foraging for mushrooms, they foraged fiddle leaf, fiddlehead ferns. And these are the top of ostrich ferns. And they are um, so cute. And they're only available like April and March. It's like, it's a season, it's quick. So you cut the tips off, you take away any like brown parts or mushy parts, which there are none. And then you, yeah, cut the ends off and then I'm going to boil them, like a quick boil, and then saute them. You could steam them. I forgot that, so I didn't set up my steamer, but I'm just gonna quickly boil them. And we're gonna have, hey Ruby Rose, it's nighttime with Dara. And it's about eight o'clock here in Sedona, eight at night, and I'm hungry. I worked hard all day getting the studio in shape. I've put away almost every last thing except for a pile of papers I have to go through. I'm so proud. I've been working so hard, and I deserve to make a beautiful, nourishing meal. And I'm going to also cook this Andean Dream pasta. It's quinoa pasta. I've never made this kind before, but Lily told me it's great. So we're gonna have some pasta and some, let's see if we can get you to see what I'm doing. Can we? How do I do this? I know I did it before. This tilts down, oh, I did it. Can you see, you can see. So I'm just gonna like take them, cut them. We're having a little moment. <laughs> It's nighttime, it's the right time to hang out with you guys. Just because. You're a nice company, Ruby Rose. I have a Jada Rose. So I like to have a little bowl. We went through, I don't know if you saw, but we went through, let me get. I like to have a little bowl to catch my little compost things. Um, oh my God, Josephina thought she was coming to help me with the studio, but I was up till like 11 last night putting things away and I was like, if she comes, it might be a great use of our time to go through every spice and throw out what doesn't belong. She wiped down every spice, she threw out bottles. We matched every glass container to a lid. Um, this is Aloe Digest from Purium. And so I don't like to drink plain water and why not have some aloe? So I take a little scoop of this, a little teaspoon, and I put a little bit of water. Then I take my whisk and I whisk it and then I add more water and I have a beautiful hydrating, sweet, delicious drink. Um, it helps me to drink my water. They have so many, I have carrot, I have beet powder, I have green spectrum, I have the protein powders, I have, oh my God, so many good things, chlorella and spirulina from Purium, and it's very, very high vibe, and if anybody's interested, email me, hello at daradubinay.com, because my group um, is starting a cleanse on Saturday, 90 days, you can eat. All you have to do is add the Purium. It's not like anything you have to do other than adding the items, which is like the food, into what you're already doing and you will see a difference. I had terrible hip pain for a long time and it got so bad that not only did it hurt when I hiked, I had to move slow and not hike a lot, which is horrible in Sedona because it's really what you need to do here. Um, and a month after taking the ultimate lifestyle transformation package, all of a sudden I was standing in the kitchen one day and I was like, wait, my hips, my hip doesn't hurt. It was so bad that I would lie in bed at night and it would hurt, like not just when I was walking. And I'm like, that's it. That's crazy. So I've been having it for a year, over a year, and it's definitely changed everything. 
So I don't know if the link is below. The link is on Instagram, but it's incredible. I'm sniffling because the juniper berries, juniper, juniper, I mean the juniper pollen. It's crazy here in Sedona. Oh, I'm recutting, that's funny. <laughs> I'm recutting the ones I cut. These are so cute, aren't they? So I'm gonna saute them with some garlic paste that I got, and I'm going to wash these, then saute them, then boil them, then blanch them so they stop cooking, and saute just for a couple minutes, and it's gonna be so fun and unusual. Today, I went out for a walk in Sedona in the morning. I wanna walk in the morning and the evening, and I walked to Cup Town, the coffee shop, and I got a matcha, and I saw these bagels, which I don't eat bagels, but I saw these bagels in the can in the canister in the in the um, display, and it said pumpernickel, and I was like, when's the last time I even heard the word pumpernickel? Never saw a bagel with pumpernickel bagel, and I was like, I kind of have to have that, just like I had to have these fiddlehead ferns because it's so unusual, and I think. When we add different things into our experience, life becomes more exciting. I think it's just a willingness to say, hey, I'll try that, I'll do that. I'll experience something different. And I get on kicks with my food and my clothing to thank you for the thumbs up, you guys. Say hi. Um, sorry for my sniffles, sniffles, but I'll, I'll tend to get into like, I'll eat the same thing for like a month and then I switch to something else and I forget about the old thing. And I'll wear the same kind of outfits, jeans and a sweatshirt for like days and then I'll switch and then I'll wear just dresses. It's not dress weather yet, <laughs> but that's the thing. I like to get, if I like something, I like to get five of the same thing. And that's my uniform. So we'll put them in here and we're gonna wash them. Then we're gonna put them in the water. Oh, sorry. Okay, wash, wash. We went through the spices today. We went through um, the pantry, which I can show you. I've labeled the shelves, because I was like, she's putting things away that don't go where they go, and the dried fruit was mixed up, mixed up with the tea, it was mixed up with the nuts and seeds, and the dulse, and the Irish moss, so it's all got its own place. And now all the appliances are under the island, and all the, we got rid of empty extra jars, and it was just like, whoa. It was like a whoa day, probably from 10 till three. Hi, Tracy. You've been following me for years. You're welcome. Thank you for being with me. You're an OG. So that's so sweet. Yeah, it feels good to be back here, even though I'm not editing or putting up thumbnails or doing whatever the things are that people do. People are so slick these days. They make their really short edited videos that are flashy and cool. And I'm like, you know what? Um, old style. And I'm gonna show up, even like if I didn't show up because I wasn't gonna edit and make things slick and fancy, then I wouldn't be showing up. So I think it's better to show up as you are. As, as you guys know, I like to do. All right. Okay, now I put the fiddle leaf figs in the pasta water. Does it matter? I need the pasta water, it's bigger. So Tracy's here, Gina. Hi, hugs. Oh man. All right, we'll do the fiddle leaf figs first and then I'll strain them out. Then I'll saute them and then the pasta will cook. That's what's going on. So I'm drinking Aloe Digest, you guys. It's so good. I'm in love with Purium. I'm soaking almonds for almond milk and I am soaking sprouts because I'm going to test my sprouts. I have a lot of sprout, uh, the sprout seeds and last two times I tried them, nothing happened. And I'm like, oh, so I have to test all my sprouts. And if not, I have to toss them. So I'm in sprout testing mode. I'm making these gorgeous fiddlehead ferns, which prompted me to draw fiddlehead fern doobie. Her name's Fern. <sighs> So now what else? I think that's it. We're cooking. 
They have to cook for like 15 minutes. I heard that they're, I thought you could eat them raw, but I heard that they could be toxic if you eat them raw. So you have to boil them 15 minutes, saute them for four with garlic, salt. It's gonna be good. And that's it. And I really need, I haven't had the time because I've been de like putting things away in the studio, but wait till I show you. It's outrageous. And my goal is to, maybe not tonight, because I might just want to like sauna and biomat and relax and read, which is unusual because I've been working to like 10 or 11, just organizing things, organizing things. And now I'm finally done and I want to be able to create in my art studio. Maybe I'll do that. So do you guys want to see while well, the fiddle leaf, what time is it? So 35, 45, 50. So at 8.50, I have to address the fiddlehead ferns. Let's take a look and see around the house. Let's go look. Okay, so turn the, so everything in here, it's my fruit stuff and my essential oils. Um, I moved the biomat from the living room floor, which I'm going to get a chair, like some kind of swivel chair here, but it's so cozy, right? And that's the little nook. And then there's the kitchen. I have to put away a lot of this stuff and then I'll feel so organized. I have this cute little mini blender. I love it. Yay, Tracy, you're looking forward to the doobie cards? Me too. This is the little biome. So that's the sauna rebounder. And over there is the biomat ready for me. And then we're going to walk to the studio. I decided to keep this table because I want to have people over coloring and drawing and art journaling. This is all I need to go through. That's it. That's all that's left. Um, I'm going to change some of that up there. I'm going to move the books, my reference books over there. Um, I have some things to go through right there on my desk. But look at this. That's the whole jewelry section. So there's my Oracle decks. I'd like to ring a bell clear the energy. And there, there's some projects I need to work on, but you could see beads and I already had them according to color. So this is what I was up to all day yesterday. Wow. So my tools are here and everything's here. So when I want to create here, I sit. This part, look at these drawers. This part is, um, thank you. This is tonight's activity if I choose to address it. I want to fill my little go, go draw palettes. Look at these. That's a palette, you guys. I don't have, um, let me shut this. So this is a palette that... Where's the magnets? There's the magnet. Oh, <laughs> and then you put a little clip up here and you clip it to your journal and you just, wherever you are, a coffee shop, outside, plan or painting. Oh yeah, we're gonna have a video, honey, on, on the chest of drawers. So just so I want you to, this is like all my water soluble situation. And over here are acrylics and Posca markers. And so I can sit here and I could sit there. I could sit there <laughs> and I could sit over there. But look how it just made so much sense because I had all the drawers on this wall and it went really high. And in feng shui, when something's looming too high over your head, it feels a little oppressive um, and overbearing. It's an overbearing energy. So we moved, watch this. So this whole, they're all filled mostly. I mean, there's some empty ones. Then those were, I moved the room around when I moved in, but those were put there. 
And then we added the ones that were up top over here. We put them over there. So now it just feels like this whole, almost like they were made for this room and built-ins. So exciting. The chest of drawers are so exciting, many chests. <laughs> There's even one over here. So I have an antique easel I'm gonna paint. And now after all this organization, I get to actually create, which is gonna feel really, really, really good. And I love to just sit there. That's my bio mat. It chills me out. It's just such a peaceful thing to do at night. Colored pencils, if you guys wanna come over. I have lots of markers for people to play with. My goal one day is to have um, an art class in here, art journaling and all that jazz. So that's what's going on in the world of me. I got out for a, um, a, a walk in the rain. I found some old drawings that I did. Let's see. So cute. I could put that in my iPad. When I drew this years ago, I didn't have an iPad. Now I can put it in my iPad and adjust it and my intent to make some coloring books. <laughs> yeah, lots of chests, lots and lots of chests. I inherited a lot of um, his art supplies, the man's art supplies. So I'm gonna have a video of this whole process just because it's fun, but you guys get to see the end result. So we're gonna go back in and tend to that biomat that's on this sofa right here, which is like an extra guest bed, um, is calling my name. Let's go see about, oh, they're doing well. Fiddlehead ferns, only in the months of March and April. Crazy, right? Let's get a, so cute. They're so unusual, aren't they? Sauteed with a little bit of coconut oil and garlic and salt. Yum. Well, you know how they are. They say that I've never really had them. I don't think I've ever made them. And they say they taste like um, a little artichokey with a mild nutty flavor. I know, so new. I mean, I've known of them. I just never had the opportunity to procure them. So just a little video to say hi. I hope you guys are doing really well and I will probably see you tomorrow. So thumbs up, comment after the video's done. Um, we're back, you guys, so we want to let everybody know we're back. And we're doing things old school, you know, not like, not like the slick, fast, low attention span, non-hangout kind of video. And vlogs are vlogs where people film what they're doing, but they got to set up the tripod and the camera, and they film themselves dragging boxes, and they do this and that, and then you're not really having time with the person. So organized. How do you organize computer camera cables equipment? Do you use the same rule that people are supposed to use for clothes? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. Unless it's an unidentifiable something and I know that it's, it, it belongs to something that no longer exists here, but I keep all my cables in a nice little box in a cupboard so that when I need a cable, I can go through the cables. I don't throw them out unless I know that it's something ancient. Um, I don't know. That's a really good question. I don't think I would throw them out because what if you need it, you know, and that's just like the cable box. Um, but that's a good thing to go through and see if you have things that belong to something that no longer exists and you can get rid of them. And then if you need them, you can get another one. So <laughs> I do march to my own drum. How can you tell what signifies marching to my own drum? I'd love to know that. Um, I have Uranus in the first house with Pluto. So that's definitely a march to my own, I'm a, I'm a march to my own drum kind of girl. <laughs> that is very, very true. I don't know it because I'm me, but I have a feeling that it does appear that way. All right. 
I am wanting to put all that away because I want to wake up and know that this kitchen is done and everything's away and I'm going to sleep so well tonight because this has been like a lot, a lot of work. Days. Days of closet and clothes. Days of studio and days of kitchen. I have, um, ooh, what about hard drives from old computers? Do you have things on them? I did. I do have a lot of external hard drives that I kept. Oh, Gina, I'm glad you found me on live too. I've kept my hard drives because what if I want to look at them? There's a lot of things of Jada or old things. So I think I should have them turned into something so that I could see them. But yes, I keep those things. Not that I ever look at them, but I do keep them. All right, I'm going to go drain the fiddlehead ferns. I love you guys. I hope you do something unusual, something exciting. March to the beat of your own drum. Really, like, do what you want to do. Life is short, and you got to have, you got to make yourself happy. I did say one thing on my Instagram live tonight that was kind of, let me put you guys back in because it's shaking. Close your eyes. <laughs> this is so real. Okay. Is that going to stay? All right, so here's the thing. I got this, I have this big furry rug that when I got this house, I was like, it needs a big furry rug in front of the fireplace. And then I painted my sofa white, this big, 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 huge, beautiful sofa from the 70s at Chesterfield. And Jada was like, you need a red rug. And I'm like, I so need a red rug. Plus, I also was thinking of renting this house, so I didn't want the big furry rug to get ruined. So I got the red rug, it wasn't expensive, and then I had nowhere to put the furry rug. What am I gonna stick it in storage and it's gonna take up the shed? So I put the furry rug back and I put the red rug by the dining room. Now the, the red rug doesn't belong in the dining room, so I put it in the studio. And what I realized, the pile is so thick that it didn't allow me to roll my chairs. And the, having that chest of drawers and being able to roll back and forth to grab something in a different drawer is like, um, it's a luxury to me and I love my rolling chair. So I have a number of them. So I was like, ugh, this thing doesn't belong anywhere in the house. I just got it. Oops, I made a mistake. Hey guys, hey Rosie and Sutton. So I decided that I was gonna give Josephina the rug because it doesn't belong here and that's okay and I made a mistake. And then I thought, how many of us are living with mistakes? Because we made a mistake and oops, oh well, I did it and I just did it. Like I just made the mistake. It's new. It's a new mistake. And then I thought, well, we don't stay with partners or people who are we consider a mistake. I believe that nothing is a mistake. It's all a learning experience. I couldn't quite figure out what the learning experience of buying a red rug and then having to get rid of it or give it away but I realized that just maybe take a little time before I go buying things to try and fix things, like have a plan. That one was like a, it was my effort to try and make this house just feel better because it felt very disjointed. It had a lot of um, thrift store finds and this thing and that thing. And I, I kind of got paralyzed about it, which is not like me because you guys know I've been decluttering. I've gotten Venice to the point where it's just dialed in. But here, I just never got that far. And I think it was psychological. Like, am I really staying here? Am I gonna rent it out? Am I gonna be here? And when I decided that I needed to make it nice enough and well enough to rent, I was like, wait, this is my house, which leads to the feng shui principle that you live everywhere like you're living there forever, and that's when the opportunities come. So I started making it, and little by little, it started getting clearer on what I needed to do here to make it feel copacetic and harmonious which didn't include the red rug. So when I thought, I made a mistake, and I was like, well, you don't have to live with your mistakes. You don't live with a man who's a mistake or a person or a job. You don't keep at it, even though you tried something and it didn't work. So you tried it and it didn't work. And sometimes you lose money and sometimes you lose time and sometimes you have a little heartache, but you tried it realized it didn't work and went in a different direction. So we don't need to live with our mistakes because then when we do, we're just living with something reminds us that it's not quite right. And we don't need to do that. We need to let go. So that was the red rug. Let's do the, um, we got to strain the fiddly figs. Actually, I want to do them in a strainer because 
they need to be, that's what they need to be strained and put in a pan. So that's what's happening here. But there's many reasons we hold on to things. And if we spend too much money on something or someone gave us something, if we spend too much money on something, okay, but it's going to remind us of that every time we look at it. And we could... Maybe you've been given something and we feel guilty getting rid of it. Take a picture of it. You know? It sounds like the red rug went to a good home. Exactly. So when we something isn't working for us, it can really work for someone else. It's a dreamy home I've created. It's so peaceful and surrounded by beautiful nature. The nature is like is astounding. The mountains are just so solid and so red and so filled with spirit and energy. Um, my house did not feel like Dara landed here and made it just right. So I've been in the process of ordering the right curtain rod. Oops, I ordered one that was too fat. I had to return it. Um, I wasn't thinking. I, the times where I do things too quick, usually I make such good decisions, but a couple times I ordered things too quickly and didn't pay attention and they were wrong. And then it takes time. It takes time to get rid of the things that don't belong, be it people, places, or things. But um, it was an interesting exercise. All right, let's scoop the fiddle leaf. Hopefully this works, because I want to use the water for pasta. Yeah. Working. Seems to be working. Although the, the fern water's brown now. Do I want to cook a pasta in the brown water? I don't know. <laughs> I'm fishing for fiddlehead ferns. I'm going to use the water. Why not? Do the air, it's hot. So Josephina's family will enjoy it as they will enjoy a lot of the clothes and things. I just, just have so much closet space here and Okay, there's the fiddle leaf. I'm only gonna use a handful of pasta. And I might as well do the whole thing because, just because. And then I'll store it in the fridge. Ta-da! Ooh! <laughs> it's like pickup sticks. I'm gonna put, I got some garlic paste. I don't like peeling and chopping garlic. It's annoying. Okay. We got our pasta. Ta-da. Let's get the garlic. It's the lazy girl's guide to garlic, but there's nothing lazy about this. But I, um, I don't know, garlic... This is not, I think fresh is better, <laughs> but I think this is gonna work. I have no idea how much to use. It's just garlic paste, it's fine. Maybe I'll buy fresh garlic. It's so true, buying from sticks and bricks, but the style of sticks and bricks here in Sedona is not my style. And the only places that have cool things that I like are the thrift stores, which many of my things are from thrift. And I kept many of them, but there was just a little bit too much thrifty. And we mismatched and disjointed. And the man who built this house, he made some, you know, interesting little choices and there were like six or seven different kinds of ceiling fans. Old, ancient, bronze, red, white, gold, different ones. I took them down. So he had a lot of, um, it reminds me, he really cared for this house. So this house is solid, but um, he made choices like, his name was Arlie. And I, I was like, Arlie went to Home Depot with his dogs his German Shepherds and he picked out stuff and found stuff and used old stuff. Everything was in working condition for the most part, but the style was not. So little by little, I'm doing things like changing 
these these knobs like I changed these to be like a oiled bronze making raw food live is so much easier than cooking because you forget that you're actually cooking something and you forget to put salt in the pasta or stir it this was easy all right we're gonna let those saute hope i boiled them enough long time hi kate i've been showing up live no thumbnails no editing real time old school and we're doing it but you're right brick and mortar is so much better is so much better emily all right weird dinner definitely an um <laughs> weird dinner fiddlehead fern and pasta stick together and not pay too much attention. Um, it's absolutely lovely to see you, Kate. It's so good to be back. <clears throat> For the past five or six years, I've been doing sessions, helping people with their life direction and using my intuition and the North nodes in astrology and the mid heaven and their, um, astrogeography and I've made courses for everyone to help themselves because you know it's my MO to not feed everybody or be people be reliant upon me but to help people to help themselves when you learn your north node you learn actionable steps that you can do every day to get you to your life's purpose and joy and Herbie is with us in spirit so um, I was there with him when he passed in Florida and I have a video to make where he actually filmed a goodbye and then Jada came to visit and sang a duet with him when he could barely speak. It is so tear jerking, heart warming and wrenching and I think I'm finally ready to do it. I just have to sit down at the computer. Um, it, it was an extraordinary experience and we love Herbie and guess what? Someone asked, is he with us? And I'm like, not in body, but definitely in spirit. No, it's okay. Um, the video is just, I, I mean, it's almost like too powerful, but I'm going to do it. He was incredible. He kept saying, I want to be with this. I said to him, we were in the hospital, and I was like, I will live with you. Do you want me to move to Florida? I'll take you to Sedona. And he kept talking about coming to Sedona. He's actually sprinkled in Sedona. <laughs> um he gave up his need or want to be buried. He wanted to be cremated and he wanted to be sprinkled and be amongst, he kept saying bumblebees. But before that, when I was in the hospital and I said, how are you going to reach out to me later on? Because we both believe that in life after. And he didn't say a word. He just looked up at the ceiling and there was these acoustic tiles and one tile, and I don't know that he had seen it, but one tile was painted blue with a rainbow and a butterfly. Oh, yesterday I saw a rainbow. So I was like, butterfly? And he was like, hmm? And he kept saying bumblebees and butterflies. And I was like, all right, bumblebees and butterflies. Today I was sitting outside and a bumblebee came up, said hello and went away. So I will tell you, I didn't, I feel him. Like, I just know he's around. Um, he was always so positive. He was such a beautiful soul. And I know I love and miss Herbie. Like, uh, it does my heart in. Like, sometimes I just, uh, mm. But he's here. He was so proud of me. He was like, Dara, if you help one person in this lifetime, you've done well. And he goes, you have helped so many. And if you're ever sad, he goes, I want you to remember even one comment that one of the people you've helped has told you and you can feel good about yourself. He always said the sweetest things. I'm getting teary. <laughs> these, look, these look a little scary. He would have eaten them. He praised my food so much. These look like they should have Parmesan cheese. Oh look, this one looks done. I'm gonna try it. 
Hervey passed in July of 2020. No, sorry, 22 and it's 24 and his estate isn't figured yet, go figure. But he's getting, he wants it handled, I get, we know that. But he, he passed two years ago. Oh my gosh, these are so good. If you get the opportunity to get fiddlehead ferns, do it. They are a little nutty and they are a little artichokey and I'm crazy about them. Absolutely crazy, I'm gonna take a picture. So when he passed and it was sucked, it sucked, he told me he was ready to go. Ugh. He was like, one day I walked in and he bent over in, in his chair and I was like, what are you doing? He goes, I'm getting small enough so that you can take me out of here and then I can leave and like leave, the planet leave. It was like so emotional. Um, but I will tell you, every time he looked at me or my brother or our children, even when he couldn't speak at the very end, his eyes were beaming, I love you. Like, I just knew he was saying, I love you. Ugh. For God's sakes. <laughs> hmm. He's here right now. <laughs> He's enjoying this. He'd like to be eating this. He's been sending me animal symbols <laughs> the other day. And there's a situation where I needed to have some boundaries. And I um, I know, it's like, oh, hey, Shema. So it's a situation, and I had to kind of create some boundaries. And I was walking on the Red Rocks on the most gorgeous path. And there was no one there. And the light was beautiful. It was evening before sunset. And the light's so magical the red rocks and the greens and the blue sky and just, oh, I felt magic. And all of a sudden, I'm like a red cardinal. And that always reminds me of my grandma, Sylvia, who was one of my favorite people. And me, her. And I was like, oh, grandma Sylvia. And then I'm filming, it's on Instagram. And I said, oh, there's something somebody left, like a man made something on a rock. I wonder who dropped what. So as I'm walking and I was like, oh, and it was a stuffed animal of a skunk. And I was like, just sitting, like someone put it on the rock because somebody probably dropped it. And I was like, huh, that's skunk symbolism. I'll have to look that up. And I stood there debating whether I should take it. It literally looked like it was a sign for me. And I was like, well, obviously, who's going to appreciate it more than me? It's sitting in Vanny B next to my B, the B, Vanny B, my van. And there's a little stuffed animal bumblebee that I got in Colorado on a road trip by myself. And then the skunk is sitting there. So right I, after I made the live, I looked up skunk symbolism. And wouldn't you know, it's protection and boundaries. And I was like, oh, wow, that's loud. A stuffed animal and angels and spirit guides and they will, guardians will get to you in a way that you can hear. And how much bigger of a sign than a stuffed animal on my hike. <laughs> so I was like, Herbie, I know that's you. This pasta is going to take a while. The fiddly ferns are delicious. Hi, Dara. I have North Node Cancer. Hi, Creative Heart. North Node Cancer, okay, in the seventh house of Sagittarius. Okay, okay, okay. It means, you guys, your North Node is what you need to do. It's opposite your south node. So if your north node's Cancer, your south node is Capricorn. The most important points in astrology, by the way. I'm not an astrologer, but I like dialed in to what's the most efficient. So yes, Tracy, it's wild about the skunk and I look at it every day in my van. I'm gonna shut the fiddle. So um, when you have your north node in Cancer, it means you come from Capricorn. You've had too many lifetimes in the beginning of this one, the first 30 years heavy in the Capricorn. I'm a Capricorn. I get this one really well because I have a Cancer moon and I've lived this polarity. So, okay, I want to do this before I run out of battery. So basically, 
You come from being a Capricorn. You come from being the provider, a patriarchal provider, provider of the money, overseeing a business, overseeing a family. And this time you're supposed to be vulnerable. That's the biggest heads up I can give you. If it's in the seventh house, it's partnership, right? In love, in business, in helping others. You could help others, actually. You might be here to help others get in touch with their own needs. So many people are running around, busy trying to do what everybody else is doing, normal people stuff, things that they're told to do, and they very often forget to stop and listen to their insides and what do they even need? What do they even want? So that's your mission. I'd love to know your midheaven because it's a trifecta. That's what I named it. The North Node sign, no, the North Node sign, the North Node house, and the Midheaven. The Midheaven is your legacy. You need to leave before you leave this planet. It is what you, makes you feel fulfilled. It is how the world sees you, whether you know it or not, and it's best to get to the business of that. The Saturn returns will do that, and I'm in my second Saturn return, and if something takes me away from my legacy, which is helping you guys and other people in their life direction, whether it's with food, home, relationships, and life direction is what I've been up to for the past six years, and I've done it, like I've done my part. There's life tools on Instagram, it's called the Life Tool School. So, um, well, it looks like you're gonna have to dip into water with all that fire. You're gonna have to dip into being more Cancerian and whatever that means to you, you know? Mothering something or someone, mothering yourself. I think this pasta might be done. No, we need a fork. Um, <laughs> the skunk, I know. It was crazy. I was like, and I did the test, the muscle test, where you, before I pick something in nature, I ask if it wants to be picked or if it's okay. And if my body leans forward, it's a yes. And if it leans away, it's a no. And the skunk was like, it was like, <laughs> it was fall forward. I'm like, that was definitely there for me. There is nobody coming to pick it up. Nobody's backtracking. No tourist is backtracking to come get their child skunk. I knew it. So I felt really, really... Mmm, I love these fiddlehead ferns. So, creative heart. Um, working is good, out of the house, lots of control. I'm very nurturing, but I hide my feelings. So, it's like, hold hands with somebody, look into their eyes and say, how do you feel? And then you share how you feel. It's a practice. Well, I'd have to see your chart to tell you what I think the retrograde means in the seventh house north node. So which planet was met in retrograde? Is the north node retrograde? I don't think so. Um, I have Jupiter retrograde in the 11th house. So Jupiter is how you find your joy, minus in communities, right? Sharing hopes and dreams and visions. But mine was retrograde. So a lot of my joy is activated. I find my joy within myself. So I do sessions if anybody needs. I'm not doing a lot of them. There are some open. Um, I prefer you guys join me for the Life Direction Specialist Training because I'll be helping you with your chart and seeing how you best can help other people. So I'm going to be sharing how I do what I do and then helping guide you to do it in a way that works for you. And that starts on the 23rd uh, this Saturday. And it's a few months of time with me. We're also doing part two of astrogeography. So it's the astrogeography specialist training because you'll have part one. If you sign up, you'll get the complete life tools that I did. And then you'll have um, part two of astrogeography, how to do relocated natal charts, how to look up the crossings, and a lot more. And that will be taught by Patrick, uh, my ex-boyfriend. And um, he's brilliant at it and Michael will be sharing some tips on Michael Alampi. He'll be doing a session. So we'll be having sessions every Saturday. Thank you for sharing Dara. Be strong and clear as you are. Bad folk afoot in the world. I know, I know there are. I know I'm aware, believe me, I have a Scorpio South node. I've been there and back and this lifetime, this is where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> in the kitchen, in nature, sharing the good stuff. Yeah, Patrick's gonna be teaching. He does sessions too, he's brilliant at it. He's been studying since we studied together um, in Baja years ago. And um, 
We're gonna be sharing what programs he uses and it's gonna be great. But if you don't can't do it on the 23rd, you can still join up and you'll get the recordings. And if you just want to learn how to be an astrogeography specialist, you can do that too, just that part. Do we think the pasta's ready? I don't think so. Looks a little bendy. You have Scorpio North Node. Okay, so you are headed towards Taurus. I mean, you are headed towards where I've been. <laughs> I'm a seer. A Scorpio is a seer. You have to be willing to be a detective, to go deep into dark situations or dark things. You're allowed to see. You're allowed to go there. Years ago, when I started hearing about all different like buzzwords about what was really going on behind the powers that be and this and that, I was in my 30s, early 30s, and I remember saying to Curtis, my boyfriend at the time, and Ed, who was like, they know stuff, and I was like, I know, and I know what you're saying is true. I just don't think I'm supposed to go there. And I was right. I didn't know my North Node in Taurus, but I know what's going on. It's just not supposed to be my focus. But if you have a Scorpio North Node or an Eighth House North Node, that is your arena. Do you think your North Node is more important than Sun, Moon, and Ascending? Yes, I do. Yes, I do, because it is what it is. The Sun is your sun, your moon is your moon, and your rising is your rising, but your north node is your dharma. The north node is what you came here to do to balance out all that south node. Less than lovely behavior, it's actionable. Um, and the midheaven is actionable because you gotta align yourself with what you're here to do. And so those are all directional to me and actionable and extremely efficient to get to where you're supposed to be. So Tracy, you are Scorpio North Node, you're a Capricorn like me. I'd love to see everybody's charts, you know? I would love to, um, you know, maybe, because not everybody wants to book a session, but I would love to just look at a chart, and I used to do this where I'd have a webinar or a Zoom, where I'd spend like 15 minutes on one person's and that sort of thing, because I really can set people straight so quickly. <laughs> With my Scorpio South Node seeing, I have a Grand Water Trine um, and a Grand Earth Trine. I have a Star of David in my chart and I'm ruled by the moon and I just have intuition and seeing. So I get to use it in sessions, but I also get to use it in the Life Direction Specialist and anybody who's helping anyone in any way, whether it's their family, in work, you're an instructor of some sorts, it is so helpful. Like even if you're a Feng Shui consultant or you're helping people with their homes, you got to know what their North Node is because you want to know how to help them for them. It's all about what you need to do for you. That's like, that's the buzzwords. What do you need to do for you? Not what everybody else is telling you. OPBS, other people's belief systems. OPD, other people's desires. OP... H, other people's history informs how they uh, guide you. And it's really all according to you and what you need. What does your midheaven show as on astro? I don't see it in my chart. Um, yes, you'll see it MC on astro.com. You can also look um, on my website, daradubinay.com. If you go to the midheaven life tool, I show you for free how to look it up. Uh, you can get the video I made, you can get the PDFs on the North Node houses, and you can get the videos on the North Node sign, or you can just look it up and at least know it. Um, it's MC. It's at the top of the chart, and it'll say MC when it's listing the words. So um, I want you guys to know, because each time I pop on live, I'm happy to answer your questions. Okay? Come on, pasta. I can tell by the look of it, it's not done. Ah, you found it, great. Okay, Libra. Libra, lovely Libra. Libra, Libra midheavens are beautiful, beautiful. And it's ruled by Venus, so your midheaven, how, <laughs> it's such a, I explain it in my, my little mini courses. I think they're like $23. You can get yours. Um, and you'll hear, hear me explain the axis and the fruit that you bear to the world and the roots, your, your roots, are <laughs> Aries. So you got fire at your roots, fire at home. Fire is good at home and you get to be Aries at home. But when you're out in the world, you're almost bringing that fiery nature to create justice and harmony in the world. So justice, law, 
helping people who can't speak for themselves, amazing at networking, um, connecting others. Does this ring a bell? Ding, ding, ding. If I had known I had Gemini Midheaven, I mean, YouTube wasn't available back then, but I would have written books and done more, finding this information out, so many turns around the sun. When I found it out, I was like, it was one of those raw food moments or the feng shui moment when I was like, oh my God, there's a name for this and people need to know. Um, people need to know how to stop doing their behavior that gets them in trouble via their south node, what actionable steps to take, what to wear, what to do, what to say to yourself to get yourself in your north node excitement. It's literally reaching and stretching to reaching and stretching out of your comfort zone, which your south node is your comfort zone and your north node is like your stretch. And when you do it, you just feel so sparkly. I guarantee when you watch the videos I made, you'll have moments where you're like cringing. I call it the south node cringe where you're just like, oh my God. I've done that. Or like, oh my God, for your North Node. I knew that. I've always known that. And my happiest times were when I was doing that. You do encourage me, but I sometimes wonder how I asked for this. But I do have food and shelter. Okay. By the way, Capricorn Sun. Hi. Scorpio Rising. Okay. A little private. Moon Aries. Okay. So next time, report back with your North Node sign. That's the who and what you're here to be. Your North Node house placement tells you in what arena of life. So I'm Taurus North Node, food, beauty, everything that grows above ground, solidity, working for myself, making my own money, not relying on somebody else for my self-worth and money. And mine, it's not just the bull staying home, it's in the ninth house of foreign travel and higher learning. And then I take that and I bring it to the world with my Gemini, with my words. So I'll be remembered from my words. You gotta know your midheaven because that's it's not only what you're here to share with the world, it's literally how you feel fulfilled. When I don't make videos or share or have an audience or teach, I don't feel good. So your midheaven helps you to feel good. Ooh, creative heart, you're very inspiring. I organized part of my house because of you. Keep going. I just did everything, of course, I think everything. I think I can say everything. So keep going. Keep me on your shoulder. Oh, come on. This has to be done. This is like the longest cooking pasta. I've been to many astrologists and they never mentioned the North Node. Seriously, Tracy, I was like mad about it. That's why I made my courses because I'm like, why didn't anyone hit me over the head with a saucepan? Like, what? Like, spell it out for me. And I spell it out for you guys. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I'm so good. All right. It's, like, perfect. Perfection. I'm going to have to make a plate and share this on Instagram. It's been so fun being back with you guys. This is my, this is my legacy. This is what I have to do. <laughs> but, like, what if someone has a Scorpio in heaven... And they think you're supposed to show up on Instagram going blah, 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 but not for a Scorpio midheaven. <laughs> I have kept things for too long. I still have things that I've kept for too long. I have pins. My daughter's in Paris, and I have a, a satchel of pins. When my mom and I took our first trip, our only trip to Paris, it was the most beautiful time. We were obsessed with finding these little enamel pins at every little table outside, and that was like our thing, and I have them. Um, no one talks about the North Node or Midheaven, so you guys pass it on. Share this video. Share my Instagram. Join the Life Tool School on Instagram. We have to get the message out. See? Nobody shares about it. It's crazy, Tracy. It's crazy. Because it's so actionable and simple. And part of me thinks that a lot of times people don't share what they know in that way because they're not, when they're doing readings, or they're not necessarily teaching. In the past, the old paradigm was that you saw an astrologer and they told you what's what, but they weren't teaching you. They kind of left it, and no offense to them, but that you'd have to call them next time you were in trouble. They were doing it like predictive astrology, um, and I look at it like it's the natal chart. It's you. It's your soul. Let me help you understand what your soul wants from you. <laughs> and it, it just became, I was doing intuitive sessions, and all of a sudden, and I was like, let me just look at the natal chart to get some heads up, and then... 
the North Node symbol popped out at me. It zoomed forward and I was like, what's that? And I was like, oh my God. So get this, I got obsessed with it. I read Jan Spiller's book and Astrology for the Soul. And I was like, okay, great. I'm gonna make videos about it. I'm gonna shout it out. Two years later, she passed. And I was like, obviously I was supposed to pass the baton. Like we have to teach each other. We have to share with each other. Just like we share, hey, green juice helps. <laughs> you know, hey, your North Node is really important. Hey, you might want to pay attention to how your home feels to you for yourself and for people you may want to meet in your life. Because when you walk out into the world with your refrigerator nicely organized and things to serve to someone and your home feels good, you leave in a way that would, that energy surrounds you. That knowledge of yourself, that you've taken care of yourself and your home feels like something you'd feel proud of, no matter how small, no matter how modest, just clean. Old is fine, dim lighting, maybe some Christmas lights plugged in to just tim dim down the lights. What's on your proverbial table? Can you nourish someone? You can't nourish someone if you can't nourish yourself. So you guys, I'm just like doing the whole soapbox thing because I'm gonna be doing a clean, clear, bright course, a life tool on how to live a life that's clean, clear, and bright according to the principles of feng shui. That's gonna be coming. So join me. I've been doing this and really hardcore. Like I worked a lot to make those little courses so that you can get your North Node video, your North Node house PDF, and your Midheaven video. I, I didn't stop until I was done because it was incomplete without it. So I love you guys. Thumbs up, share. Do what you gotta do. How about if I plate this? It's so funny, I just realized that I'm willing to take the time to make videos and hang out with you guys. I'm not willing to take the time to edit, although I have three videos to edit, so I'll have to do those. But I'm going, I'm doing live, because that's that's how I feel best. I think we create too much work around what we do and then we don't do it so easiest is best <laughs> this is so beautiful i could put a little coconut yogurt on this that could be fun i either use coconut cult which i love him and what he does and when they first started they gave me jars so cute back in the raw food days and then i also use coco june oh thank you megan honey Wait, I gotta read these comments. Ooh, so pretty. Um, Sagittarius North Node. Okay, we're not doing sun and moon, although it's good to know you're Gemini. Nice to meet you. And Pisces moon is the sweetest. Jada has it. Um, Sagittarius North Node. I have a ninth house North Node. So report back next live when you know your house placement of your North Node and your Midheaven. And I will help you. I'm planning to book a session soon as I want to move out of state in the fall and have no idea where to move. Ah, I'm your girl. Or where I need to be in the world for my dharma. Megan, I'm your girl. Um, Sag North Node is getting out of Dodge, is, is learning. Sagittarius is a willingness to leave home in search of truth, a higher truth, be it spiritual or academic. So it's not easy for, if you're Gemini, it's not easy. The hard part for, your North Node's hard for you. It's always hard. It just is for everyone. For Gemini South Node to be Sagittarius North Node, it's very hard to leave local. It's, you have to force yourself. It's certain things for your North Node you have to force yourself to do. And for Sagittarius North Node, they have to force themselves to go 60 miles from home in the car and longer or on an airplane. And it's not always easy to do. Um, but it's good to know. <laughs> Don't edit. Thank you, Creative Heart. We want raw, Dara. I think that's all you're going to get. Like editing, I wouldn't, when I used to edit back in the day before live on YouTube and Facebook or Instagram or whoever went live first, it was not YouTube. But I, when the second live happened, I was like, I'm in. Like, oh my God. But before then, it was like I was live because I made the video talking just like this. 
without seeing your comments though, I would make the video and that night I would put it into iMovie and edit. I barely watched myself. I put a beginning and an end on and that's it. But even that took time and it was like, ugh, it like was draggy. And once there was live functioning on the platforms, I never went back. Miss Stewart, North Node, oh, I'm so glad you guys know. North Node in Capricorn. Okay, important to know whether it's fourth or fifth because that's definitely a shift, but I'm so happy you guys know. North Node in Capricorn. Okay, we got another Cappy North Node. Um, I will tell you, just so you feel better, that the only people who have ever complained about their North Node are the Capricorn North Nodes because Cancer is such a sweet place to be. It's homey, it's comfortable, and they don't want to be Capricorn, but Capricorn gets a bad rap. Capricorns are elegant, they accomplish, they're, uh, they're noble, there's integrity, and they will get the job done. You're just not supposed to do the job yourself, you're supposed to delegate. Um, if your midheaven is in Gemini, then this will appeal to you because that's where mine is. And if your North Node's in the fourth house, that's a dance between Capricorn and Cancer. And your arena is, it's like you're supposed to do business as a Capricorn. And in the fourth house, you would maybe have a business of intuition or home or mothering or things having to do with the home and maybe being in business with your family. Um, and Midheaven mid Gemini gets bored with just one thing, so two businesses at a time and um, teaching, selling. You just tech Libra North Node. I assume that it's Aries South Node. It is, it is. Sign up, join the Life Tool School and obviously Dara Dubonet and look at my website and see, um, just so you guys know that your house placement is equally as important. If you only know your North Node sign, it's half the equation. Half. Okay, I feel it's in the fourth. I'm feeling you on the fourth. And your bit, your arena is fourth house, home, home. But home isn't only home. Home is home inside of yourself too. It's your feelings, your needs, your intuition. It's moony, it's beautiful. You have a hard time delegating as a cap. <laughs> yeah, me too, I get it. But sometimes you gotta let go of control uh, depends. If you just want to be a one woman show, you can do that. You don't have to have anybody working under you. You just can't be under anyone else. Get that. You don't have to have a big business. You could just be functioning as an independent contractor. But again, I like to look at your charts, but in general, I'm riffing on what this all means. So I appreciate your thumbs up. I appreciate you guys being here. This is just a hangout. And I'm glad you like, remember it used to be called keeping it raw and keeping, keeping it raw, keeping it real. And then I changed it to clean, clear, bright. And if I was going to change it to this 50, 57 turns around the sun, I think I'd call it wise, wild, and free. <laughs> Marching to the beat of my own drum. All right, let's plate. Plate sounds so formal. Let's serve. Oh. It's so cute, little squirrelies, swirly swirlies. Isn't that beautiful? All right. Blessings, my lovey. I'm gonna go eat. Um, you're welcome. You're a creative person, nurturer. You would be very intuitive because you come from cancer. It's hard to figure your career. Um, how old, how young? <laughs> Thank you. I love live. I don't want to go back. I did promise to do the leather sofa, the experience with Lily at the house for her. I want to share her and it's fun. Um, and then Herbie's video, which is not fun, but it's like those three I need to do. But otherwise I'm live. I'm not doing anything else but live. If somebody wants to film me, edit and post, that's fine. <laughs> Big hugs, you guys. I will see you soon.